Yeah, not a problem. All right, so he's going to play h4 next, guys, right? That's his big plan. Um, I don't have anything prepared against it. So we're just going to play d5. Yep, and there's h4. Fine, if he plays h4, I'm going to play a5. Just to make it fair. Um, Hmm. Okay. Um, sure, let's castle. Why not? I don't know. I don't know why we're playing casual today, but we just are. I mean, casual at least means that when we're playing these interesting eight pawns versus a queen position that I'm not going to lose any rating points playing it. Not that you can, but... Um... When I do play rated, I tend to play with an increment, so... If somebody challenged me without an increment and um, it were rated, I probably wouldn't accept, but you never know. Like, you'll hear people on the forums rant and rave about, oh my god, I lost a game on time, and it was so unfair, and I was totally winning, and... The classic response to all that is, why weren't you playing with an increment? Like, if you enjoy winning and losing games on time, but you don't enjoy losing on time, maybe playing without an increment's not for you. And they'll try to come up with justification about, well, no, like, I was totally winning this, so it doesn't matter that the time ran out. And, again, <laughs> yeah, people make strange arguments. All right, we're going to see where this goes. Um... So I was considering... well, there's all kinds of things I can do here. This actually looks good, and it doesn't require me to do something stupid. So we're going to just play this. So surprisingly, I've apparently gotten a position that doesn't suck. <laughs> well, yeah. Maybe learning some end games would help with uh, playing better end games. Um, okay, this knight's annoying. Let's get it out of there. All right. There's the fly in the ointment. Um, I was trying to figure out what's so complicated about this, and I did not see knight 2 f3. Um, but I think I'm still doing really well here. It's not every day that you get to just push around a Lee chess master um, as well renowned as Zaitsev. Yeah, I, I'm honestly impressed that I've played this um, pretty well so far. Oh, um, so a place to go for endgame training, well, one would be your local library. Chances are they have books, or they have access to books, that are about chess endgames. Um, but... Say you don't want to go to the library, you want something more convenient. Um, there's all kinds of chess software 
that does teach you like fundamentals of endgame uh, play. Although books illustrate the concept far better than any software that I've seen to date. Um, but um, for convenience sake, yeah, maybe, um, I don't know, do something like Chess Master. Or I presume Fritz has something similar, but I don't know. Um, but yeah, I've gone through all the Chess Master tutorials. They're quite fun. I've read all the books at my local library. Again, quite fun. Um, so yeah. Okay, so I'm not sure what to do here. Like, d5 is kind of difficult to deal with. Ideally, I'd want to just push that and land my knight there. Um, but I know, like, if I push c4, he's either going to move his knight to d4 or he's going to take my knight. So this is actually pretty, in my mind, this is a critical position. Maybe it's not. I could just take his knight and take his h-pawn. Um, the problem there is that he takes my d-pawn, and who knows where we go next, right? Um, I could play bishop e4, intensifying pressure on the knight, protecting my d-pawn. Um, then he just trades knights. And again, I've gotten nothing out of it. No, I've got to move this knight somewhere. His knight on f3 is useless, um, and I need to gain some more space. Knight c4 does come to mind. Um, yeah, I just don't know if this is going to be worth it or not, but I'm curious enough that I want to find out. Ah, Zaitsev means rabbit. That's pretty cool. Oh, you guys can hear that, really? You can hear, like, van sounds and such? I kind of tuned that out, but apparently my mic picks it up. Um, yeah, we get those sounds because I have a window. And things happen outside that window. Okay, so my opponent's probably intending to follow up with b3. Or s well, no, he can't do that. Yeah, I don't know what he's thinking. I'm really confused at this point. I want to just play rook e8. But I should connect my rooks first, right? Connecting the rooks is the thematic thing to do. Oh, he wants to do knight d2. Not that that changes my move any, but that's what he's up to, I think. Um, so if I, like, lifted with queen d7, I'm not hanging anything. Um... Yeah, this is interesting. So, a couple moves ago, I could have grabbed the h-pawn. Here, I think I'm just going to develop with queen d7. Did the free candy truck arrive? No, I haven't seen a free candy truck around here in a while. Um... Can you imagine if there were a free candy truck? And 
people say never take like candy from strangers, then I mean that would be the saddest thing ever. A free candy truck just driving around trying to give away its candy and nobody takes it. That just sounds tragic in a way. Okay, so I want to play Bishop or Knight D three. Knight D three followed by C four or Bishop takes and then C four. It looks beautiful. Um it's really hard to resist that, but do I have better? Like I've got knight g4 here also. But then I don't get to land my bishop on d3. Oh. This is an interesting position. D3 is such a beautiful square, too. Because it inconveniences so many of white's pieces. Um, we're going to go with this and see where we end up. Because I can't calculate any further. And I just see, like, if we trade on G4, um... Then he's got knight f3, and I have no idea where we're going there. But this looks much clearer. Just positionally, this looks crushing. Right? So, like, I've got this light square complex. All the light squares around this area um, are mine. And I control all this, too. And meanwhile, this bishop is just cut off everywhere by all of white's pawns. Like, I've never seen this kind of total domination in my own games. This is the sort of thing you read about in books, um, but usually don't get a chance to play out yourself. Although that would be a fun subject for a training module. Now, I could just take this knight. My dark square bishop isn't that influential, and taking the knight would accelerate an attack. But I don't need to take it right now. But I could take it if I needed to. It's probably best I just bring my rook to the open file. Oh yeah, queen e7 looks reasonable too. Um, I'm just trying to play by all the chess principles. <laughs> Bodvinik would say, resign with red balls. Yeah, it's just amazing like how dominating this position looks. I mean, I've played on from worse positions, by far worse. <laughs> so I would not fault an opponent at all for continuing here. Because, um, I mean, maybe white could win this. But my goodness, this, I mean, it, it, it's not a happy position for white. This is anything but happy for white. Man, what a game. Now the sad thing is, I just keep calculating here and I'm, I'm still looking for some way to break through this. I'm still not content with this, because I don't see the breakthrough just yet. Oh, of course, of course. Practically speaking, white's in great practical danger here. Um, it's just difficult. Chess is never easy.
So one idea that occurs to me is doubling on the e-file. Another idea is, um, well, I don't know. Actually, um, so, 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 so. I mean, yeah, doubling on the file seems to make a great deal of sense here. Because it lets my last piece into the game. And how else is that piece going to get there, right? Um, is there anything useful White could do if he had an extra move? Because I don't want to give White extra moves if they actually help him. Um... Okay, so, yeah, I'm going to double, or at least I'm threatening to double, because I don't see anything better. Yeah, you yeah, know, I, I see the whole that idea too, Zwish. I definitely do. Um, I just, I'm not convinced that it gets anywhere. Like, if I saw some decisive follow-through after that, I would totally have played it, but I didn't. So I'm going, like, with what I do see. I don't think getting my queen on h3 helps me at all. Whereas, I see that doubling my rooks actually generates some threats um, that I am able to calculate. Okay, so, yeah. Well, here we go. Cashing in. <laughs> there, I won a pawn. I won a pawn, but also my center looks pretty good. Yeah, in much slower games, um, well, I, I don't know if it's so much a matter of being principled, but I'm just calculating and trying to figure out what tactically works. Um, and if I don't want to, like, move my queen off sides if I don't find a tactical follow-through. Whereas I did see these ideas of, like, rook takes f4 and rook takes d4. So, I, I'm just playing according to whatever makes the most threats. <laughs> Don't lose your faith in Zaitsevs. He loves you. Alright, so... Well, this looks fun. <laughs> just take here and promote. I don't know.
Man, I, I'm feeling for sights of here. Yeah, queen h3 checkmate is a strong move. Oh, I meant to say to Unihedron, thanks for stopping by, but I missed it. I was so intensely focused on this game that I forgot. Uh, well, it was nice that Unihedron did stop by. Um, mm -hmm. Alright, so we'll take a second pawn, because I don't see anything better. and just intensify this light square complex. Um, and now how do I follow through? Can I follow through somehow? I was just assuming that I would have something here. Um, it might not be that simple. So, oh, tactics. Don't fail me now, tactics. All right. See if this pawn weren't here. This would look so much more convincing. Oh, is Nightbot no longer here and able to respond to the style command? That's too bad. Uh, come on, get back in the game, Nightbot. People need to see how we got this awesome looking board. There we go. I mean, it's obvious what uh, Zaitsev's planning here, but what do I do about it? Maybe I just sack my C pawn. That might be the best thing I could do with it. It's kind of a shame. Um. I mean, what else can I do? I could centralize my queen. And yeah, let's do that. This keeps my queen active. Oh, he's not moving queen c3. Um, <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> You'd like a draw. Ha 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 ha. No, that's not happening. 
It's nice that he tries to make me feel all tense about this, but... Um... No, I got this. I got th Oh, I forgot there's no increment. That makes this a little more exciting, doesn't it? Alright, so without an increment, we're just gonna YOLO it. Um... I probably should have remembered that there was no increment. It's totally my bad for forgetting the time control. So, yeah. I could probably still win this. It's not Let's not lose hope just yet. E6 would have been a better square. Why didn't I pick E6? Alright. Oh! Well, would you look at that? Yeah, I'm not entirely paying attention here. I still have a decent position, but this is nowhere near as convincing as it was a few turns ago. There we go, check. And take some more space. Can't do that. Well, this got ugly, didn't it? Well, okay, so I'm giving away all my. Okay, fine. Damn it. I mean, okay, sure, technically I've got this rookie three thing. It's probably not going anywhere. How did I blow that? I usually play with an increment, and this time I got caught off guard, and that's my fault. Um, and that's why I started rushing and playing dumb moves like bishop f5, because I forget where all the pieces are. Um, increment is really useful. <laughs> uh, chess lover thinks that I lost that game. That's really cute. It's like he's not even watching. Um, so, yeah, what happened? I had a good position. Even at the end, it was still even-ish. But um, here's where queen f2. Yeah, I panicked again. E1 equals knight. See, I saw E1 queen, and, like, I figured either E1 queen or queen g4 or rook e3 or something was going on here. I didn't see E1 knight. And I have pre-move set to promote to a queen anyhow, so exercising that move on the board would have been a little bit tricky. Um, now, why is this so good, though? What makes this so good? Oh. Oh, would you look at that? Yeah, I totally had this, right? Yeah, Zaitsev lives on. <laughs> yeah, I blew this endgame on purpose so that people will continue playing this dumb opening. I mean this good opening. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, it's a good opening. It works for Zaitsev, it could work for you. You just have to play good endgames. Um, but okay. I'm curious. Um, what else did I miss this game? 
It's back here. I had an advantage of nine pawns. Um, and I should have played rook f3. It did cross my mind to play this. What did I play instead? I played queen f3. Rook f3 did cross my mind because this does allow me to threaten like rook f1 at some future point. But I was concerned about rook a3. Um, but I thought like b6, queen c3. Oh, I'm threatening this. Never mind. So queen c3 is off the table. You'd have to play rook g2, but then I have this. Okay, so yeah, everything's covered. There's nothing to worry about. Nothing to fear but fear itself.